Hi, my name is Carlos de Jesus. I'm um, the assistant principal at Pedro Albizu Campos High School. I'm also the director of urban agriculture for a collaboration between the high school and the Puerto Rican Cultural Center. We've gone about the business of putting together uh, an expansive urban agriculture program to help deal with um, our community's designation as a food desert, um, but also to deal with the unconscionable health disparities that our community is um, plagued by. We have uh, an unconscionably high uh, prevalence of obesity, diabetes, uh, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, uh, coronary artery disease, stroke, and cancer. And we believe that there is uh, more than a, an association, there is a causal relationship. Um, and a study like this, uh, Place Matters in Health in Cook County, uh, is critical for communities like ours, that we know uh, what the issues are, but we don't often have the data that is so essential. Um, we need to be able to persuade policymakers and in order to do that, we need sound data. Reports like this are just indispensable to the work that we do. Uh, and we're able to um, convince folks that we need the resources necessary. We have the ideas, but often we need the resources in the community to be able to address uh, health disparities, to be able to, um, in ways that are perhaps um, uh, unique uh, to our situation, but ways to be able to deal with food deserts. Um, we have some wonderful ideas to be able to deal with that, but often um, if we don't have the data that we need, if we don't have the resources that we need, we're not able to uh, affect uh, the change that we want to affect. So I think this is a wonderful um, study, and we're glad that uh, it's been put forth and available to us. Well, this is an educational greenhouse. Um, and it, in a lot of ways, it's a, well, it, as you can see, it's an extension of our science lab. Um, here, we've completely redone our science curriculum. Um, and so no longer do students learn one year of biology separate from one year of chemistry, separate from one year of physics. We've integrated the sciences. Um, and so the students will, when they're learning photosynthesis, they'll learn the biology of it, the chemistry of it, the physics, the earth science of it. Um, and we've gone a step further, uh, not just integrating the sciences, but we've um, sort of focused our science program around urban agriculture and botany uh, and horticulture. And so that doesn't mean that every single lesson is a lesson in, in uh, urban agriculture. They still learn all of the um, the concepts that are required by state standards. Um, but anytime we're ex uh, discussing a new concept, we try to give urban agriculture examples. So they'll learn the periodic table. And um, they could, you know, they could discuss any one of the 108 elements in the periodic table. But our teachers focus on those elements. Um, that are relevant to urban agriculture. So they'll focus on nitrogen and phosphorus and calcium and potassium. Those are the, uh, the micronutrients that are key in plant growth, growth. So the students are learning the periodic table, but they're also learning about soil uh, and plant science. In 2006, uh, Mari Gallagher's uh, study on food deserts was, in Chicago was released. Um, and it was a confirmation for us that our community is indeed in a food desert. Um, also, around the same time, I became aware of uh, Steve Whitman's uh, study where, um, through the Sinai Urban Health Institute, uh, where they studied six community areas, including Humboldt Park. Um, and what those studies indicated uh, was that the prevalence, the prevalence of obesity, diabetes, uh, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, um, coronary artery disease, stroke, and cancer were like off the charts. Um, and so I um, presented um, some of that data to the students, had them read the studies, and then for six weeks I 
um, engage them in a um, project-based learning experience where basically I gave them lab laptops so they can do their research, they could find out for themselves what, food de what a food desert is and what the factors are for all of these chronic illnesses. Um, and then they were charged with um, deliberating their, around their findings and coming up with solutions. And so what they came up with was what has ultimately become our urban agriculture program. So for instance, they suggested, uh, or they learned that it's not truly a food desert, it's not that there's an absence of food, um, it's that there's an absence of investment and that it's uh, an issue of disinvestment in this community. There was a jewel, there was a Dominix, um, but for whatever reason they opted to close their stores uh, and left this community with, uh, without a place to be able to buy produce. The mom and pop stores uh, in this community, there are 10 uh, within a half mile of us and none of them sell, uh, one out of 10 sells produce. Um, and so the students determined that we needed to grow our own food. They suggested at first that we um, purchase vacant lots and do community gardening. I asked them to research the cost of the price for a vacant lot and they quickly realized that uh, it wasn't cost effective. Um, lots are going, vacant lots are going for over $200,000. So those would be pretty expensive tomatoes. Um, and so they went on to come up with other ideas. And one of the students looking out the science lab window uh, saw that most of the roofs in this community are flat. And so came up with the idea of doing some um, rooftop gardens. Another student said, well, you know, we're in Chicago and um, we don't have a very long growing season. What if we build a greenhouse? Um, and so, and they said, in fact, why don't we build it on the roof of the cafeteria, uh, which, which we did. We're now standing on the roof of the school's cafeteria. Um, and it happens that the greenhouse is positioned so that it's right next to the science lab. It becomes an extension of our science lab. Uh, something that you should know is that our school focuses on students who have dropped out of school. So all of our students are former dropouts. Um, and yet, incredible ideas have come um, that have contributed to, to the building of this community and sort of the renaissance of uh, Humble Park have come from student ideas. And so this is one example of that, like, uh, this urban agriculture program. So uh, I was saying that right now we're featuring all of the ingredients that are necessary uh, for sofrito. Sofrito is, uh, it's almost like a pesto. It's uh, a mixture of uh, a number of herbs and uh, vegetables um, that becomes the base of almost all Puerto Rican cooking. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so here we have uh, onion that we're growing. Uh, and so all over there we have garlic, uh, but we also have green peppers, uh, red peppers, uh, cilantro, ají dulce, oregano. This, believe it or not, is oregano. Oregano normally, people think of Italian oregano, which is a little tiny leaf. Um, this is Caribbean oregano, and it smells and tastes like oregano does, but it's not even the same family of plants. And so I, I think that's a curious thing.